When my son was in kindergarten, his teacher said that he expressed a great amount of empathy. I thought, how had he developed empathy at such a young age? What had allowed for this to happen? So when I asked her, she said, it's probably something he learned from home. But I wanted to figure out how. How do we develop empathy? And I was going to learn it was through living authentically. Here, let me explain. I'm going to take you on a journey, one of my own self-discovery, where I learn that living a more authentic life will lead to deeper relationships and allow for an empathetic heart to be born in a five-year-old. With any good rewind of self-discovery or looking at your own life, I needed to think about my own childhood. I thought, was this something I too had learned at a young age, and therefore I was just passing it on through the generations? Well, when I thought about it, my family really valued privacy and stoicism. It was as if we had built a wall, where we showed out to the world that everything was fine, and we kept our feelings and emotions in. So that wasn't quite it. But I was reminded of a transformation I had at work. One that would end up playing a big role in how my son gained his empathetic heart. So let me explain a little bit about what I do. At the ripe old age of 29, I landed my dream job. I get to help students transition from high school to college by going on backpacking trips where we get to help them hike steep terrain, challenge themselves, see beautiful vistas, cook food over a camp stove, and have wonderful conversations at night. You see, when you land your dream job at 29, I personally felt like I needed to prove myself. So let me show you how that looked. There was a point in the summer where it's August, and at this point we're working every day of the month. I had already been to work that day, and it was a weekend, and I was home and getting some things together before I headed back to the office. I needed to have a cup of coffee. I needed to uh, have that cup of joe to give me some more energy. So what I did is I took my canister, much like this one, down off the shelf and put it on the counter. Except I missed the counter and it went crashing to the floor. You see, when I looked down and there was coffee everywhere and ceramic pot, there was also some blood because my toe is what broke the fall of that canister. So as I'm cleaning it up and trying to bandage it, and I can hear my son, who's about seven months old, crying, I call my friend who's a nurse and ask her to come over and help me. When she gets there, she looks at my toe and she cleans it up and says, oh, you're going to need stitches. I say, stitches? I do not have time for stitches. What else do you got? She goes, well, we could super glue it shut. Perfect. Sign me up. Super glue it shut. Here we go. Off to work I head. Well, that ends up leading to infection, multiple doctor visits, <laughs> and needing to re-slice my toe open later so it can heal properly. You see, I was more concerned about portraying the facade of everything was fine and that I was in control instead of letting people see behind that wall that I just needed a little self-care. So a couple years later in this journey, uh, my son's about two and a half now, and I'm going through my own major life transformation, and I'm getting a divorce. I'm learning what it means to be a single mom, living on my own, a new financial situation, and still trying to balance my job, my career. So that summer, when we're out on our training trips, we've just finished a day of backpacking, and we've uh, set camp, and we've finished our meal, and we have what's called a Nalgene fire. This is where we take a headlamp and put around our water bottles and they glow these beautiful colors. And this becomes our campfire for the evening. And you see that year I was just thirsting for more. So when I asked my staff, what is a fear you have about this summer? I decided to answer first. And I said, I fear I won't be enough. I do not know how I am going to be there for you 24-7. Should you have a leadership emergency or an emergency evac situation? And still be there for my son, who also needs me 24-7. You see, it was the first time I let people see behind that we don't talk about it wall. And little did I know that showing my authentic self would break down walls and create a stronger foundation stronger than any wall I ever could have built. Sharing the realness of my life 
was the most authentic thing I'd done. And it birthed this desire for other, more real relationships in my life. And it spawned my empathetic side. So I'm trying out this whole authenticity thing at work. And I'm also realizing I'm doing it at home as well. So I specifically remember a time when I was shopping with my son. And I'm holding this thing in my hand that I really want. And you see, it was a want, it wasn't a need. And I look at it, and I put it back on the shelf. And he says to me, Mommy, why aren't you buying that? And I say, I can't afford it. You see, I knew my situation would eventually change, and I could afford things later, but I was just like, I can't afford it, honey. <laughs> I was given good advice when going through my divorce that... Our children will watch how we handle difficult times, and in turn, they will learn how to handle their own difficult times. For it's not a child's burden to carry their parents' pain, but it is our job to help our children understand how to navigate their own pain. So we would laugh and cry together. We'd have good days and hard days. And you see, there was no we don't talk about it wall. I chose not to build it. And in that summer of change and transformation for me, there's another important morning. And this morning is when we send a group of young leaders off to lead backpacking trips on the West Coast across the country. So we get up early and we send them on a shuttle to catch a plane to fly all day. And for me, the best parallel I can draw is it must be like dropping your kid off at college. You want to hug them goodbye. I want to look them in the eyes and say, I believe in you. I picked you for a reason, and I know you can do this job. But how was I going to do that at 5 in the morning with a sleeping child? Because parents and caregivers out there know that we don't love waking sleeping children. It usually leads to cranky children for the rest of the day. But you know what? I do not remember if he was cranky. Because what I remember is this beautiful sunrise and this cute little kid in his PJ singing to the leaders, and you see, that morning they saw me show up. They saw my messy, beautiful, not perfect life. They saw me balance being a mom and a leader. And since that summer, my staff has become a family because they've seen me as someone who is trying and not somebody who is faking it. I have then had the privilege of supporting them through their highest of highs and their lowest of lows. You see, for the staff, this job has become about a journey to living authentically. They get to show up, be messy, and still be worthy. I've learned that there is no substitute for true, genuine human connection. And authenticity can be the foundation for which we build these stronger, more real relationships. Creating environments of both acceptance and empathy in our personal and professional lives. You see, when I showed up, when I came out from behind that we don't talk about it wall and started showing my true and authentic self, something really cool happened. It allowed others the chance to do so as well. Real conversations happened, connections were formed, and empathetic hearts were born. One of my biggest takeaways in this journey is that I have learned that it is okay to be real and authentic with our children. It allows them to have a greater understanding of feelings and emotions at such a young age. You see, it turns out that my son's teacher was right all along. He had been learning empathy at home when I learned to be my authentic self. <laughs>